And yet another dynamics problem. This dynamics problem will be a little unique. What I want you to imagine is you have a truck that's going down maybe a racetrack or just down a road that has a curve, a slight curve, and a bank. And it's a 15 degree angle that the truck's on. I'm going to draw the truck wheels here. Your truck wheels here, you have your axle, transmission, you have your bed, and what I'm going to put on the back of the truck, let me quickly draw the back here, what I'm going to put on the back of the truck is maybe a spool, something round, maybe a big beach ball doesn't matter. Um, in this case I'm going to just say that's a spool of maybe like some wire or something. That's a hundred kilograms. Okay, so that spool sitting on a 15 degree, this truck is going into the paper around this curve. And the curve is a hundred, the center of the curve is a hundred and, no, let's say two hundred meters in that direction, to the left. So it's going around this bank, two hundred meters uh, away as the center, it's at a fifteen degree bank, and that spool is not moving. What I want to find out is at what speed does that truck need to be going? to keep that spool from moving. So we do the first thing that we always do. We draw a free body diagram. Always, always. I'm going to simulate the spool as a singularity. Add in the, the weight of the spool, which is W. You had in the normal force, which is going to be right here. and just realize that it's 15 degrees off. Okay, so one thing that we can remember, first of all, this is the free body diagram. So, with that in mind, we should also draw the, the kinematics diagram or, or the motion diagram. We can draw it just below. The acceleration will be just to the left. And it'll be AX. There's no AY. It's equal to zero. And this is motion or kinematic or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So let's solve the y direction. Taking a glance at this again, we know that there's zero acceleration in the y direction, and you have these two forces, so let's toss them together. You do it on down here. You have your y, and w equals n cosine 15 degrees. That's where we are. There's zero acceleration, so we just look at it like a statics problem. Multiplying it all out, you get mg is equal to, so that's 100, you know, 9.81 times 100 equals n cosine 15 degrees, divide the 15, cosine 15 over, and you get n is equal to 1,015 
0.6 newtons. Perfect. So now that we know the normal force, let's try and figure out what the x component of that normal force is because that's actually what's going to be accelerating it to the left and we have to know what speed will equal out that centripetal force. So anyway, let's solve for y or in x direction. x direction look at the four, uh, the free body diagram at first. The only thing that's acting in the x direction is this is this x component of nx thus you know that nx must equal mass times that acceleration and actually if we kept the directions this would actually be negative nx equals uh, m times a negative ax if we were saying to the left is negative but negative on both sides I'm just saying that they're equal to each other you can tell that they're going in the same direction both to the left so nx equals m ax well nx is equal to what I'm going to call just what looks to be n times sine of 15 which equals 262.86 newtons that will equal MA which is going to be a hundred times your AX and we can actually solve for AX at this point AX is equal to 2.63 essentially meters a second squared perfect now we have the acceleration we just have to figure out what would centripetal force, what would that uh, centripetal acceleration be? Well, centripetal acceleration, what's the equation for that? Well that's v squared over rho it's also, it's also r theta dot squared but that doesn't help us as much we want to know the speed of it, so v squared over rho, v squared, uh, v, that's the speed. So let's just plug in what we know. We don't know v squared over rho, which is 200 meters equals 2.63 meters a second squared. And when you solve for all that, you get V is equal to 22.93 meters per second. Now whether or not that's possible or not is irrelevant. I was just giving an example. But yeah. That's a really simple stuff on how to solve for this. You just have to remain calm while you kind of work it out. First of all, you draw the free body, then you go into the motion, and then you just solve x, y, get it all out of there. Anyway, I'll be talking to you guys later, and leave any comments if you have any requests. Have a nice day.